Hi friends, it's Magpie and Tingers here and today we are back with another van life diary. The title of this video is not clickbait. We sincerely think this is the most important video that you could ever watch on our channel and it is because it is one of the best lessons that we have learned while living on the road, doing van life, backpacking, through hiking all over the country. And it is that most people are good people. In our travels so far, we've stayed with tons of people and met literally thousands of strangers on the trail, on the road, every where we go. One thing that they all seem to have in common is that they think the world is a really dangerous place. It seems that like almost everybody is scared of their neighbor. Everywhere we go, it's like, don't go to this neighborhood, it's really bad. Don't go to the city over, it's really bad. Don't go to the northeast, it's too liberal. Don't go to the southeast, it's too conservative. Everywhere we go, it's just like everybody has this constant fear of the people around them. I do think that those things are important, but I think it's a little exaggerated and that most people are a lot better than you give them credit for. One of the things that we hear all the time is like, be careful, the world's crazy. Like nowadays, like you can't trust anyone. Back in my day, I would have done that, but now I wouldn't. Which is sort of funny because crime has dropped precipitously over the last 30 years, almost everywhere across the nation. The U.S. is just a much, much safer place than it was, which is so contra to what you see in the news or what you hear from your neighbors. The news and media is a good thing to talk about because I think that's where people do get that misconception about the world. So we have kind of a theory besides the news why people think this way that they do about society and it all comes down to vulnerability doing van life backpacking and through hiking you are in a constant state of vulnerability having to hitchhike a ride on a trail or being broken down on the side of the road or asking a really distant relative or friend of a friend if we can sleep in their driveway and do laundry it takes being in a vulnerable situation to like really see how good people are it's when you actually do those things and you actually do find yourself with with your thumb up or stuck on the side of the road, that's when you really realize how many people are out there who would drop everything to go help you. I think we get really comfortable in our lives. We work really hard to own a house, live in the nice neighborhood, all that good stuff. We don't want to make ourselves vulnerable because vulnerability can be dangerous and scary. It all really comes down to the fear of the unknown. Living on the road really makes you embrace that unknown and it's not as scary as we thought it was gonna be. And it's just been an overall like really positive experience. And I think that we both have a better outlook on the world having done this trip. I think a lot of people will very much disagree with this video and say that we're young and we're naive and we don't know what we're talking about and that's fine. But we wanted to share what we have experienced traveling 20,000 miles across the country for almost a year now. It restored some faith in my perception of humanity and I think it did for Nick too and I hope it does for you as well. The first story we want to talk about is our friends Mark and Dee and the reason I'm starting with them is because they were the first people where this lesson that we learned was learnt. <laughs> I don't know. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know. They were the first time that we both truly had to depend on a stranger's help. We met Mark and Dee while we were through hiking the John Muir Trail last summer. It's a 220 mile trail through the Sierras in Southern California. Very desolate, very far away from any sort of civilization. When you resupply, we had to get completely off trail and that is where we met Mark and Dee. The trip out to that resupply really kicked our butts a lot more than we thought it was going to so we ended up getting there a lot later in the day than planned and we did not have time like before dark to get back on trail we have nowhere to pitch our tents essentially for the night we go to the first cabin that we see people outside which was mark and d's cabin and we just get to talking with them and they are great people we eventually got to the topic where we didn't really have a place to stay for the night and we didn't ask them i didn't expect them to offer anything to us immediately these strangers that we had never met before in our lives all they really know about us is that our names are brooke and nick and we're hiking the John Muir Trail, they offered for us to pitch our tent in their yard at the cabin. This wasn't technically allowed at the resort. It was just such an act of kindness that I didn't expect. We were very appreciative for it because I don't know where we would have stayed. Not only were they just being very kind about it, they were also like risking themselves getting in trouble for people that they've never met before. Also, we were planning to shower there. Showers were out, of course, and Mark and Dee graciously offered for us to like come into their cabin and take, take a nice warm shower, which we didn't take them up on. I really regret that. I think I kind of felt bad already that I was taking advantage of them a little bit in the yard. So maybe that's why. Thank you to Mark and Dee for being the first strangers to show that kindness and kind of teach us that it was okay to depend on strangers and okay to ask them for help. Our next story takes place in Birmingham, Alabama, where we were driving through on the interstate and we actually ended up breaking down and coasting right into a pretty sketchy neighborhood. We break down there on the side of 
the road. We spend the next eight hours working on Winnie and trying to replace some essential parts. And during that eight hour period, the sun set, it would start to become nighttime in what even the uh, locals would call the ghetto. We were super worried, like all senses heightened. We're working under the street lamp. This is not the best area, so we're hoping we can get this done pretty quickly and get out of here. We got approached probably by like two dozen people during that eight hour period. I was a little bit nervous when they started coming up to us and every single time they offered us help, just said hi or struck up a conversation and said that they like traveling too. It was crazy. People offered for us to stay with them. People offered food, people offered water. Luckily we did end up getting it fixed and we didn't have to spend the night there. It just goes to show that like even in the ghetto of a dangerous city, once again, we had no negative encounters and every single person who approached us was not not only nice but willing to help. Even one of the locals who just worked in that area as she was leaving was like, are you guys from around here? And we were like, no. And she was like, I would not stay here tonight. She was the only person who didn't offer to help. <laughs> yeah. Like, what the heck? <laughs> we were basically scared for no reason is what I learned that day. Our next story takes place in Key West. And we heard a lot about Key West before going down that they were not very kind to van lifers, which turned out to be false. But that's not the story that we're focusing on today. This was the opposite of Birmingham, where we heard that everyone was going to be snobby and mm -hmm. rich and an asshole. We get to the island of Key West. We end the day at Mallory Square to watch the sunset. We sit down in this square right next to these two homeless guys, and they strike up a conversation with us, swap life stories a little bit. And at the end of the conversation, they're like, do you guys want some food? And we're like, what? Because, I mean, they're homeless. It's just like pure shock for me, I think, because that's the last thing I would have expected them to say to me, you know? After we were offered food from homeless people, we sit next to this lady. She was an immigrant from the Pacific Islands and she strikes up a conversation with us and she just is telling us about how America is the best country in the world, how she loves to live here. She had the most American pride of anyone that I've ever met in my life. And she just, she just loved it. And it was so nice to see that because I feel like in the news, we don't get that a lot. So it was so nice to hear somebody like have such positive thoughts and outlooks. And then to end our day, there was a blind guy on our bus and we strike up a conversation with him and he immediately offers us money because he thinks what we're doing is really cool. We of course don't take it and he wanted us to stay at his house. All three of these interactions were just again strangers that we had literally just striked up a conversation with less than five minutes ago and the kindness that they showed was really really nice to see. So in snobby Key West we were offered <laughs> food from homeless men, reminded to be more prideful of our country by an immigrant and offered money by a blind man. Pretty wild. And one of my favorite stories to tell is in Sedona, Arizona, where we were hiking up to a peak and we ran into a couple who was trail running named Josh and Stacy. And we strike up a conversation and they have an incredible story. They were just super friendly and it was an awesome conversation that, that really stuck with both of us. We make our way back down to the mountain. We text them, hey, do you want to grab ice cream? And they say, no, actually we're lost and we're super far from our car. Can you come pick us up? And so we're like, sure. So we drive out to this trailhead and pick them up. And they were so thankful that we came and picked them up they offered to let us shower in their hotel room. And we were like, heck yeah, like we learned our lesson with Mark and D, always take the free shower. So we shower in their hotel room and they're like, hey, let's go grab some Mexican food. So we go out and get dinner and they buy us dinner and share more of their story with us. That was wild, like just ran into them on trail. And a few hours later, it, it felt like we were best friends and we still keep in touch with them. Once again, some total strangers just sort of dropped everything to, to help us out. It was awesome. In the moment, we didn't even think it was that crazy, but like, telling our parents later, they were like, what? You met some strangers and then gave them a ride and then showered in their hotel room and then they bought you dinner? Like, what? <laughs> it almost seems normal at this point because everyone we run into is just so nice. If the reason you're not doing something that you want to do is because you're scared of people or an area or an ideology, just go do it. It's not a reason not to do something. In fact, it'll probably be your favorite part about it. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with the interactions that you have. A huge thank you to all those people that have made that impact on us. There are countless other stories that we just didn't tell in this video. You all really did change our perspective of the world and I just want you to know that. This video is as much dedicated to our future selves as it is to all of you guys because I hope I never forget the lessons that I've learned on this trip. Be kind, it'll come back your way. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe to our channel for more of this content and we'll see you next time. Bye!